Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Paulina and most of you already know that I'm a fourth year med peds chief resident. And today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite things, which is what is med peds? So internal medicine and pediatric doctors are referred to as med peds among colleagues. And basically what this means is that you can treat patients all the way from birth till very late age. So this means that you can treat babies and adults. MedPeds doctors are trained to diagnose complex medical conditions. And the way that we achieve that is by really delving into critical care and inpatient services. All right, so in order to become a MedPeds doctor, everyone has to go through medical school and we all know that's four years. And then you match into MedPeds residency. And this residency is four years, so a little bit different than other residencies, which are usually three years. Once you're done with residency, then you will be qualified for dual certification in pediatrics and internal medicine. So some people will actually choose not to practice in one or the other. And in that case, it's not required that you take both boards, but Generally, most MedPeds doctors will. And then after you graduate, you have an option of becoming a fellow in whatever discipline you would like. If you choose to go into fellowship, that depends on how long your training could be. It could be anywhere between one to three years. Or you can go ahead and start as an attending. What are the MedPeds subspecialties? So MedPeds doctors are eligible for any of the categorical subspecialty training programs on both the pediatric side and the internal medicine side. So some of the common ones that are at our program are combined outpatient or combined inpatient services, combined nephrology, and we also have some combined people who do endocrinology. But you can really go into anything. Here you can see that there are up to 31 subspecialties that are listed and I'm sure the list is only growing. Let's talk about some match statistics. According to the NRMP website from 2021, you can see that most of the PGY positions in the United States were filled. There were 385 available spots and all of them filled. Most of them were by MD seniors and also by some DO seniors. But you can also see that US IMG grads and non-US IMG grads filled some of those spots. And then the next table shows you in the last four years, the number of spots has really stayed pretty constant. So in 2017, there were 381 spots and that increased in 2019 to 390 and now we're down to 385. So according to the ACGME, these are the rotation schedule requirements. You can see on the left column that internal medicine has a certain amount of requirements and then pediatrics on the right hand side also has a certain number of requirements. And these include a combination between inpatient services, intensive care, and specialty subservices. One thing that sets MedPeds apart from other residencies is that we don't do any surgical procedures. So if you are a person who is very hands-on and likes to be in the OR, MedPeds might not be for you. But if you are squeamish and you just didn't like the OR or you don't see yourself being a surgeon in the future, MedPeds might be a good choice. The other thing that kind of sets us apart is the fact that we don't do dedicated rotations in uh, obstetrics and gynecology like some of our counterparts from family medicine do. So although we don't deliver the babies, we do get to resuscitate the babies. So that's one big distinction. And the last one that I would add on to that is that we don't do any dedicated psychiatry rotations. So all of our knowledge of psychiatry comes from medical school and then also from practicing on an inpatient service. So MedPeds Clinic and our institution is awesome because you get to see both children and adults at the same place and you don't have to travel from one place to another and it's all staffed by MedPeds attendings. So throughout the four years that I've been here, I've had closer relationships with my attendings because I've been able to work with them in clinic. And usually it's one half day a week 
And unless you were on like vacation or you were post call or you were working nights, you still have your half clinic once a week, which would help you to build more continuity and build your own patient panel, which is great. What are some of the elective opportunities that you can do in MedPeds? Our program goes by a system where you request your electives. So we will send you a form once you match and it'll give you options between one, two, three, or four, however many <laughs> you wanna pick. And if you have a specific interest, we typically like to get you to do that elective early in your first year so you get exposure right away in the thing that you're really interested in. But you can do electives in literally any, any sort of uh, medical discipline just because we have so much flexibility in our schedule and because we have the added bonus that we can do both internal medicine and pediatrics. So like I said in the beginning, there are many reasons to love being a MedPeds doctor, but for me, I think one of the things that I really fell in love with was the fact that there's so much variety of acuity, of pathologies, of just different situations that you learn how to navigate. I feel like that has made me a better doctor. And then also there's so much cross coverage, I guess, or like double dipping because a lot of the congenital diseases end up being chronic diseases that maybe typically your internist might not be so comfortable with, then MedPeds really helps to kind of address that transition of care. Whereas maybe other doctors don't feel as comfortable because the care is very pediatrics oriented. So I feel like MedPeds has really been a good fit for me for those reasons. So let's be real. There are some things about MedPeds that are just really hard. So one of the things that I always tell applicants and medical students is that second year is traditionally the hardest year for MedPeds, at least in most of the programs that I interviewed at. It's just the heaviest inpatient and it's a difficult year to get through. So definitely be prepared for that. And then also first year, I mean, in addition to there being a very large learning curve in how you function, there's also the fact that by the end of your first year, you're expected to be a senior. And that means that you've only had half of the training that other, your, your other counterparts have had. So you'll only have six medicine, medicine months and six pediatric months. I mean, there's a lot of crossover, but sometimes there are just things that you won't know. And that's difficult because as a senior, the expectation is that you'll know more, but you won't always know more. And it's okay. I think that's part of being MedPeds. And in the end, it makes us work harder and it makes us be successful. And the last part is that there's definitely a lot more inpatient service compared to other residencies. Uh, in comparison to like the outpatient services. So what that means is that you are gonna spend a lot of time in the hospital. So if you're a person that really likes more clinic and, they, and you like to talk to patients um, and you like patients who are generally more healthy, then being med peds might not be good for you because you are gonna be required to take care of patients in the hospital who are very, very sick or even dying. And that can be a lot harder to handle for some people. So are you thinking about MedPeds yet? Because if you are, here are some things that I think are important for students who are planning to match into MedPeds. I do a lot of the interview season for our program. And through the years, I've found that the things that really stand out for applicants are that you are a person who's a team player. MedPeds needs to know how to play, how my program director would say, nice in the sandbox. So <laughs> MedPeds play nice in the sandbox, okay? And we are people who like taking care of other people. We're people who are self-directed, and we're people who work hard. We're not gonna sit around and you know, complain about this or how this isn't working. We are problem solvers. So we don't like inefficiency. We like to get things done. We like to help people and 
we like to have fun. So if those things describe your personality or the things that you're looking for in your residency, definitely give MedPeds a thought. So what is the outlook for MedPeds trainees? Honestly, there is everything. <laughs> you can do anything, really. I have attendings who they will do a combination between inpatient services and outpatient peds and medicine or just medicine or just clinic as an outpatient or you know there's a, a lot of us that also choose to go into fellowship. Some of my med peds attendings are also in leadership roles in our hospital and they are very well known leaders. I mean they are people who work really hard and they work their way up through the hospital system because everyone knows that our program is strong and that MedPeds people are gonna put in the work. Lastly, I wanna kinda mention one misconception about MedPeds. So one of those is that MedPeds is a growing field, which is not really true. MedPeds has been a residency um, program, the, the earliest programs were in the late 60s, and it's been around for a while. It's just maybe people are not considering it as much. They wonder what it really entails or why is it four years versus three years. But MedPeds has been here for a while and it's definitely here to stay. All right, so that's it for me today. I hope you guys learned what it means to be MedPeds. And if you have more questions about MedPeds training, drop your questions below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. And if you want me to do more videos like this, let me know also. And if you would please subscribe, that would make my day and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss uh, my next video. Thank you guys so much for being here with me today. And as always, be good, be safe, and be healthy, friends. Bye now.